And there's Miss Ellie. All right, ladies. So, so uh, you know, I just wanted to, before we start here, um, ask you a couple questions. You know, as, as you kind of think about the events that you do, um, I'm maybe just kind of bounce from person to person. Meg, um, what type of events do you do? You know, can you give people kind of an overview of what you do and what sort of results do you typically get when you create your events? Yeah, so I um, do a combination of kind of smaller 10 to 15 person events and then slightly larger um, 30 to 40 family events. So I think in kind of the context that we're talking today, like both of those would be considered micro events to a lot of people because I think when you think of client events, you think of a huge hundred person pie event that Laura's gonna be talking about that she does super successfully. Um, I am definitely more on the introverted side. And so when I was trying to figure out how to make this business work for me, I could not imagine cold calling. Um, and I think just in general at events, like it's hard for me to connect with a lot of people if, if it's too big. So I just started um, hosting events for my ideal clients who are professional women, either single or like moms who are busy working professionals and think, really thinking about what types of events could I host or what kind of networking opportunities could I host to connect with more of them. So I started doing um, you know, events at nail salons, blow dry bars. I think, you know, when I talked to James, he loved the blow dry bar idea. <laughs> um, but, and this summer, my focus, you know, is really getting back to both just strategic networking within kind of like my chamber, you know, running groups, that sort of thing, but also getting back to being really intentional about the micro events. So I'm hosting, I just moved into a new place in December and I'm doing, um actually just laid out recently five like 10 person events on my patio over the course of this summer so three of them are going to be for my vips and i kind of divided like 30 to 40 vips into three different groups who all kind of know each other and have met before um i booked a wine tasting for july 14th and just texted the you know five or six vips from that group and said hey um, you know, would love to host you on my patio, can bring a friend, or I, you know, have met some of their friends, so why don't you invite so-and-so? So for me, they're super easy to put on. I can do one or two of those a month, and then in between those, I'm adding in kind of the larger, more family-oriented events that still aren't um, 100 people, but, and are still super simple to put on. Mm -hmm. um, so yeah, it's going to be a very event-filled summer. Okay. And, and when you're doing an event, how much of a lead time do you need to prepare for an event? So for these ones on my patio, three weeks. I mean, it's just super simple. I know we're going to look at Laura's plan. Um, my steps are really simple for these smaller events. It's just literally booking the activity and then starting to reach out to whatever the ideal, you know, audience is. And if it's something, you know, I just did a yoga class at a new studio last week. Um, and that was probably about a three week turnaround too. We found a new studio, they hosted us for free. I bought $200 of food um, and used the reach out to text like my, 100 women past clients or top 100. So um, it was a smaller turnaround, but because it was like hot yoga on a 95 degree day. <laughs> so it's not probably the best. We're going to redo it in the fall. Um, but that's kind of what I like about these. It, it's not a ton of work. It's almost no work and it's not a lot of lead time. It sounds like it's something that you really enjoy doing and that you'd probably want to do anyway. So it doesn't exactly, feel like yeah. work. Right. I want to be hosting people on my patio. So, mm -hmm. um, and actually my accountant told me that I can, my business can rent my house from me. So check with your accountant on that. I don't remember what it's called and I, I will look that up, but I can pay myself $1,200 a month each time I use, use my space. 
That's that's fantastic. Okay. And yeah. and when you do an event, just roughly how much money does do you have to budget for a micro event? Like the range? These are under five hundred dollars. Um, the wine tasting, it's gonna be I think four hundred for the sommelier, and then I'll buy some food, like a charcuterie board or something. Um, I am trying to be really intentional. That's my one of my main focuses going into a shifting market is finding people to help sponsor. Um, and one of the beauties of one of my lenders is like these are mostly women's events, but he'll still sponsor and not come. <laughs> so, <laughs> That's great. So it can still that was going to be my question, the, spons the sponsorship uh, prong to that. So you, you're, you're attempting to sponsor going forward? Because some of these could cost I'm some money. going to attempt for t the rest of this year to get every single piece of marketing covered by someone. So whether it's an event, print, you know, I'm sending out a magazine, trying to get that fully sponsored as well. So, I mean, I, we're talking a lot about cutting expenses and I don't want to cut any of the marketing or events. So in without cutting it, I'm going to try and have someone else pay for as much as possible. Okay. Megan, we're going to come back to you. And for folks that have questions, jot down your questions. You can put them in the chat. And then when you get into the breakout room, you're going to have an opportunity for a QA and a with, with Meg and with Ellie as well. So I'm going to switch. Uh, so we're, we, we're going to jump from uh, micro events to community events and have Meg, um, or Ellie join us here real quickly. And uh, Ellie, you know, same thing for you. Why did you choose community events? How did that become your thing? Sorry, might need to unmute. Um, so community events, would it actually started before COVID, but COVID really took it to the next level to start with. Um, and I realized that most of the client events that I did could be expanded to include the community. So it was a really kind of a natural transition into just making the events that I was doing bigger and then adding events to it as well and um, putting together a calendar, which I uh, di divert from every now and again because I add events as well. So I'm a little bit um, knee jerk as well. So I come across other events. He takes out for a walk come across other events that I decide to do and but community. Um, so not to belabor the point, but I come from a really small village and I live in a town that is ultimately like a small village. And to be able to have that kind of community is something that I've been very intentional about for the last um, three or four years. So that's where the community part came from. But as I said, a lot of the things are just extensions of the events that I've always done. Mm -hmm. and, and with community events, do you tend to get like now business or does it, is it different? Like what sort of results do you get typically with, out of community events and how big of an event, what's the budget look like? How do you, how do you manage that? So the best budget is the free budget. Mm -hmm. um, there's a lot of things that can be like, first annual, the second annual and things like that. So you have the initial expense of things. Um, the core of what I do is it starts with the Facebook page that I started back in 2013. I think most people have heard that. Um, I run a Facebook page. We feed that like it's the hungry, you know, two month old baby constantly, constantly, constantly which is such a challenge now that I can't get on Facebook right now. But so if anybody knows anybody in Facebook, I'm not kidding. I need help. Um, but the Facebook page has uh, in a community of about 45,000 people, we have 15,000 likes and it's mostly people that are in our community. Um, so just pouring into the community, but doing it as cheap as possible with as much help as possible with people in the community, but just listening to makes a big difference. So my goal is to make it that I don't actually spend any money on it. Mm -hmm. And, and you, you're you kind of the queen of sponsorships or you have, you've developed these relationships. How did you go about doing that? How did that become, you know, how, how did you earn the right to go to people and say, hey, I'd like you to sponsor this or you know help out with that? So they know my heart's in the right place. Mm -hmm. um, and it's everything is a layered event. 
So whether it's one event that's layered to the next event that's layered to the next event, it's always about being coming from contribution. And contribution may just be free advertising for somebody. Contribution may be, um, uh, you know, giving them a spotlight on the Facebook page. Uh, but I have really great relationships with different entities. And it's funny because Meg says, I need to go to the Chamber of Commerce. So in my area, you cough and you hit 50 realtors, especially at the Chamber of Commerce. So to me, that's like not worth my time to do because I'm more of a, a lone ranger and I'll go off and do my own thing, um, which I found out when I started my nonprofit in my schools. I didn't want to have to adhere to somebody else's rules. So I'm more of a... Um, ask for forgiveness rather than permission kind of person. But, but in the, the big picture of things, it, it really has happened where I have created these amazing community relationships with some big heavy hitters and become an influencer in my community. Mm -hmm. and, and just, did you naturally gravitate to that? You're, you're definitely a high D. Um, and, and just make things, uh, uh, make it, get it done sort of, sort of person. Um, do you think that that personality style lends itself to doing the community events maybe more so than some other type of event or, or is that not necessarily true? I don't know because Meg said how shy she is. I'm painfully shy. Mm -hmm. um, I, if I'm at an event that I'm not controlling, I'm a, what do they call it? A, a shrinking violet on the wall. Mm -hmm. I don't enjoy being somewhere when I'm not in control, which is pretty scary, but it is what it is. Um, and to go and network in a group, I literally will last there, unless I'm drinking heavily, I will pretty much last there for 20 minutes and then I'll skate out. Mm -hmm. And then if I'm drinking heavily, that's not a good thing because I talk too much. But it's, um, uh, I like the part of organizing it. Mm -hmm. I like the part of bringing people together, the connections, and finding avenues that I can give back to the community through the big picture event. So I'm very big picture. Mm -hmm. and, and when you have a big event and a big picture event, like how many people attend your events typically? Like what's the a range in the number and what's the range in like the cost? Like how much do you have to budget for an event? I don't spend any money, Dan. I told you that. <laughs> well, you don't spend, but how much does it cost to throw the event, to conduct the event? Well, it, it, it's that, that's the beautiful part about it. It's like we just did um, Pride. So we started Pride last year. The church, who is very uh, pro-gay um, friendly, said, you can use our space. And then we actually had vendors there and uh, we had a car parade and the fire department came and we, we bought some, some items that we'll be able to use for a couple of years, but we had almost 500 people at our pride event just three weeks ago. Um, Blessing Baskets was such an amazing win. To give credit to everybody, I noticed on Nikki Klein has a community group, not a page, how they were doing these Blessing Baskets. And I jumped on the bandwagon of that. And Blessing Baskets, we had 98 Blessing Baskets that were donated. I went to... Um, uh, I sold a house to a Ravens player who's really sad today. You saw the news anyway. Um, and um, I asked, I went through his mother and I asked him to sign these Nerf balls that my lender donated to me. So I have these like nice footballs. So he signed them and he's really big in, in the Ravens um, organization. And then I went to the restaurant that always supports everything I do. I said, hey, can we use your restaurant? Then I went to the schools and I went to that's so funny jan's front and center jan was actually at my event she came up and donated two baskets all the way from virginia mm -hmm. so we had um 98 people donated baskets and they filled them i mean each basket was at least a hundred dollars plus i didn't spend a dime on that all i did was had to buy my clients who helped me out dinner which actually cost me about a hundred bucks and, and do a basket myself and then we got the school rather than me having to schlep the baskets anywhere, the school guidance counselors, they showed up and however many baskets they were, they were divided equally and they all took the baskets. So the event itself started at six, ended at nine. And the kudos that came from, from that, and we fed 98 families. So in a lot of situations, you people are just looking for the vessel, the person that's going to organize it. Um, you know, and it, it, it's an amazing 
reward that comes from that too. That's amazing. Jan, you raised your hand. I didn't know if it was because you had attended this event. I'm, I'm curious. Um, if you were... Yeah, I, I did want to ask Ellie a question about that. So Ellie, I know that you use um, State Fair, the restaurant, a lot. You did for the baskets thing. Can yeah. you trace the evolution of that relationship? Like, did that start with a one-off thing and it grew? Because because that night of your basket thing, they were doing half price hors d'oeuvres and drinks for everybody. The, the owner of that restaurant is super savvy. Um, just recently, and I think I have one here, we just did a graduation where I took a graduation sign out with 200 people signed up and I stuck my advertising in their front yard since uh, for a month. And what went with that was a certificate that said, go to State Fair, which like um, uh, Jan said, and their sister restaurant and you get 20% off. They are so smart. They understand that 80% of something is better than 100% of nothing. And they do support everything I do. And yes, there's not every restauranteur is going to say yes. And he never says no to me. And it really, the relationship fostered during COVID. And he knows that my heart is, is in the right place, that I want him to be successful. So it's a win-win deal for all parties. Mm -hmm. So, but good question, Jen. So I know that a lot of people have a lot of questions of each of the, the participants, and we're gonna have an opportunity in the breakout rooms to do that. And here's the plan. And, and we're gonna go to uh, Laura in just a second. Um, and the plan here is we're gonna, I think what our, we'll be able to do, Ellie and, and Meg and Laura, is I think we can set you up as hosts or co-hosts and that you'll have the ability to record your breakout session. It'll be recorded to your local drive. And then somehow we'll see if we can kind of get that back because people are asking about those breakout sessions so they can listen in on the ones that are not going to be able to participate in. And when we're done, we're going to come back together and share ahas and share some of the nuggets that people got other people, uh, maybe from your breakout session, got out of this. And, and then if there's other questions, just kind of wind down with that and then wrap up with what do we do next? Or what, what do we get out of this? So Laura, you're the person that kind of uh, got us to this, um, you know, that, that kind of led to this uh, because of James highlighting you. And, yeah. and we, we talked about the micro events. We talked about these 500 person event, which is hard for me to even imagine, like trying to organize that. That's, that sounds a little overwhelming to me, uh, at least right now. And, and I'm sure Ellie could talk, come back and talk to that in a moment um, or before we wrap up. However, uh, you know, you, you just really start with a conversation around client events. So what type of events do you host and, and what sort of results have you gotten from those events? Well, um, we host uh, a variety of events. Um, usually we do about five a year and um, we invite our past clients, current clients and referral partners basically, which I'm very, I mean, I've watched Ellie and I've listened to her through shift the whole time. And I think, wow, I am just not as, I can't get that, that does, I can't wrap my head around that. And um, so, and I like things very simple. So I think I might speak to people that have a hard time getting this together because I watched other people do events for a long time. And I was like, I'm never going to be able to do an event. I can't, I don't think I'm going to be able to do an event. And then I started really, I got an administrative assistant and she really helped me put this together and start it. So our, our, our my thing is, is I like to make it super simple. I don't want to do a lot of work for it. The work that I do is just calling people and, and inviting them and sending out stuff to invite them to our events. During that event, to get ready for that event, I don't want to spend a bunch of time. And I know that sounds kind of terrible, but I don't. So, and so I don't. <laughs> so we always do things. We leverage other um one of the events that we do is a fall festival, which I mentioned before, and it is at a pumpkin patch. All I do is buy a ticket, put a you know table up, get people through, and then everything is there. There's a petting zoo and there's, um, I don't know, a maze and all kinds of things that they can do. And we, we, we leverage that and we, you know, we do a goodie basket or something like that, but nothing Nothing crazy. Um, other things that we do is a pie day, which James kind of makes fun of pie day. And I have tra traced 26 pieces of business from, from a hundred um, people pie day or whatever. So I am 
we we do do a local um, bakery, and so we make it special, and people drive all across town to come and get an apple or pumpkin pie from us. And I'm always amazed by it. I'm really amazed. By it. And we do, you know, we'll have like a charcuterie board and wine and cheese and all that kind of stuff for them once they get there. And they sit down and talk to us and all of that, but it's all leveraged. I'm not spending a bunch of time on anything ahead of time. So that's where I'm maybe, maybe a little different. I mean, kind of Meg, Meg's kind of keeps her simple too. So okay. I'm a, that's why I'm in awe over Ellie because I think, oh my gosh. <laughs> so I just, I don't even think I'm that creative. So um, as far as like cost and stuff, I don't spend a lot of money either. It's usually around $500, maybe less. Um, we do get sponsors. I've probably fallen down a little bit on that. Sometimes I think I could get more sponsors and we just don't. <laughs> so um yeah. So, but they're not expensive events. I mean, I do about five to seven dollars per person. That's kind of how we, and our events, our fall festival gets the most amount of people, and it's about a hundred, usually about 150, 160 people, and we invite about 800 people. So, you know, and I don't. It is like like you said. I've said this too. It's not about the event, like getting people to the event. It's about inviting them. The only thing is, is once you start having these events and People come year after year. You'll notice like the same people are coming. They're like so excited for your event, um, which definitely kind of makes you more of the, you know, in charge of your database or in charge of, the, you know, whatever. So the CEO of your database that way. So that's what we do. And it, I keep, I do keep it simple. I leverage that. Another thing is like a movie day or something, you know, renting out the not even running out the movie theater, just telling, you know, you go to this movie or this movie and we do it in, you know, the front of the movie theater. So we haven't done that for a couple of years, but it's a pretty easy one also. So, so, so you talked about trying to keep it simple and, and I love a little graphic that you shared with us. Is it okay if I share that with everyone right now? Yes. Okay. All right. And, and I know you wanted to tweak it or you, you tweaked it a little bit. No, I've tweaked it because now I'm like, now I have to put it out in front of a bunch of people. So we are, we tweet, I'm like, oh, geez, I need to make sure this even has everything on it. So I forgot about putting the day of. So okay. I've added, well, I added to our chat. I added the updated one. So, okay. All right. So in the chat, everyone will see the updated one. Here's the original one, but let me just click on it so that people can see it. Um, let me just close this. Uh, and get to uh okay let me just change that okay all right so um again here's the agenda where this is uh, we're going to take a moment here to kind of give you this overview of this marketing uh the event planning model that laura had shared with us and then go ahead and do breakout rooms for about 15 minutes or so and this is what the model is laura could you talk a little bit about the, the model that you'd come up with can you see that there yeah you need to make it a little bigger, Dan. I think if you make that your full screen, or is it just me? You can uh, also change your setting to the standard, which makes it bigger on your screen. Let me see if I can do that. Does anyone know how I can? Is that on the view here? That would be the view. Yeah, for, you could do it. You could hit the screen that's all as well. Sure. Is that a little bit better? Actually, Mindy's advice yes, is better. Me. And then you made it even better, but hitting standard made it great. Sorry to interrupt. I thanks, Mindy. I'm not sure how to hit standard or where to hit standard, but that's unfortunately that's about as good as I know how to do right now. Yes, and we can see it. And we're um, gonna and we're gonna walk through it. Yeah. So if you can't yeah. see it, uh, Laura, would you mind taking people through that? And then I'm gonna take them into the timeline that we you know that other tool, so that people can kind of see the same information in a different way. Yeah. And then we're going to jump into the breakout room. So if you haven't already uh, renamed yourself and put a one, two, or three in front of your name, um, one, if you wanted to go to Meg's breakout room about micro events, two, if you want to go to Ellie's breakout room around community events, and three, to go into Laura's breakout room around community event or uh, client events, please go ahead and do that now. And Laura, could you kind of walk us through this five-step process that, that you had and then talk about the, the, the change that you made? Yeah, the change I made was making it a six-step because I forgot a step on this. So, <laughs> um, But we, we start out planning, you know, we've had a, these different, um, in step one, these are some different things that we've done. We also do pie pizza day, which is 
PI day on March 14th. That was one of the things that we do that was very successful. And um, so we just decide, you know, what are we going to be doing this year and when are we going to be doing that? Okay. Then about six weeks before that, um, we decide on our sponsors and our charity. And we usually use the same charity. We do um, a Salvation Army. That's our charity most of the time. And we also have a more, a little bit of a smaller local charity called the Sheer and Shed. So we'll ask for donations of either food or, you know, sharing shed needs pillows or blankets or things like that. So we, depending on what it is, we will, you know, start, decide what we're going to be doing with that. And then we figure out who we're going to target. Is it going to, you know, and most of the time our, it's our past clients, our current clients and our referral partners. And, um, and that's what we've been doing pretty you know, much the whole time. Um, and then what we're asking them to do, what if we're asking them to bring something, you know, during that, uh, during that event. And then, um, and then we create, you know, a spreadsheet for contact, you know, that bit.ly or whatever, where they just put in their information and goes, whether they're going to say yes or no. But we're talking, we're calling people the whole time for six, it's about six weeks, we're calling people. And once we get a hold of them, and they say yes or no, then we wait until the very like a week before, and we just remind them, you know, the people that are going to be coming, remind them of the event. And we remind them during calling, Facebook, and um, emails. So, and then we do have during the event, we did figure out what items we need, if we're going to bring food or signs or what we are going to need, goodie bags, whatever it is. And I don't spend a lot of, I am not a, um, I don't do a lot of fluffy stuff, you know, like I don't, do a lot of that. So if I'm going to do that, it's usually um, very minimal for some reason. So um, it's just because it takes time and we got to plan that. So, and then step six is just, you know, we, we always, we bought a camera and a, a uh, printer so we could print off um, their uh, pictures. So we take, make sure we take a picture of everybody. And then we just write a thank you note on the back of that picture and send it to them. So that's just something that we've come up with in the last few years. Just it's an easy thank you. And, um, you know, and that's, that's what we do. And then we do, we call the people that attend, we call the people that attend, thank them for coming. And then we start with the next event basically <laughs> and call the people that didn't come and invite them to the next event. So um, it, it does depend on what that is. It's, you know, the Paul Festival gets more families. Um, and, and so does, actually most of ours is around families and kids. I will have to say that um, I've had, I don't do much around, you know, more intimate. That's why I want to do it. I'm going to do it a more intimate one someday since here soon. So um, anyhow, that's, that's pretty much it. And this gets put into um, Google, like, hey, you know, so that we know, so we get alerts on, hey, we need to be making sure we're paying attention to this. this, and this. So. so Laura, is it okay if I share this sheet with everyone? You already shared the updated one in the chat. Is that okay? Yeah, I shared it in the other, I shared the updated one. So yeah, okay. for sure. Right. So, so for everyone else, I just want you to know, you're going to get a copy of this spreadsheet. You, and I'm going to put a link in the chat in a second. So you can have, you can go to it because when we go into breakout rooms, I want you to open the chat and go to your room. And this is what you're going to find is um, I took Laura's sheet here and I created a, a, it's called a Gantt chart. It's basically a project management tool. And this is what it looks like. And I have the same headings that she had before. Here's a description of, the, of a, an event. And this is an event that as I was preparing for today, I thought, my gosh, this is something I ought to do. It was a back to school ice cream social fundraiser at a local firehouse that I'm gonna host uh, an ice cream social at the local firehouse the week before school starts and invite families to tour the firehouse and donate school supplies to needy families in the community. And I'm gonna have participants register to be part of a neighborhood watch group and to win a ticket to basically like, uh, maybe I can get the high school to donate uh, a pass uh, for the year for people to go to any of the client events or the events at the, the school with, at no cost. Um, so that's the description here. Uh, this is the event date, and the way I set this up is that you know you can change the date, and then this all of this will change automatically. Um, you know, this is the only thing that you have to change, and everything else will change automatically. So if I did the 
event on the 10th, um, it'll change that to, you'll, you'll eventually see this all update in just a second. Let me change something here. Okay, just so you can see it a little bit clearer, I'm gonna zoom out a little more. And you see, this is a timeline. And this is the list of steps that you need that I basically took from Laura's sheet and put them here and I've assigned them either to an assistant or an agent. Um, and, um, and then I basically said, it's gonna take so many days to get these things done. Uh, and this is the number of work days because it factors out the weekends. And, and with, as time passes, you're gonna see this red shift over every day of the, as, as time passes. Every, you know, basically tomorrow it'll be red here in the next week, next Wednesday it'll be red here. And you'll, it'll help you track where you're supposed to be. So anyway, this is a tool that I wanted to give to everyone here. So you can use this for your own team. If this is of use to you, use it. If not, don't worry about it, but just know that it's there. Um, and, um, and what I'm gonna do here right now is in the chat, you, sh you should be seeing in the chat this the link to this, and everyone sh will have access to this. And what I'd like you to do, uh, Prim, um, are you ready, Prim? Uh, yes, I am. Okay. All right. So I'm going to stop sharing my screen for a second. And Prim, uh, Laura, thank you very much. I'm going to go ahead and um, go ahead and just. Uh, Laura, you're going to be in room number three. Meg, you're going to be room number one. Ellie, you'll be in room number two. And as soon as uh, Prim hits the button, we're going to go ahead and go into the different rooms. Meg, uh, Ellie, and Prim, I'm sorry, Meg, Laura, Meg, and uh, Ellie, we're going to set you up as co-hosts. So this will give you the ability to record uh, your breakout session to your, hard, to your hard drive. And if it's okay with you, maybe you can share that later on. Um, Sasha, you have a quick question? Yes, just really quick because I still haven't determined which group. So um, the size of Meg's group, but the, I guess, content in quotes of Laura's group is what I'm interested in. So what do I do? Because <laughs> Laura's examples sounded more of what I wanted to start focusing on with a sprinkle of Meg's stuff. So but here's not the... as large as 100, 200 people. So he, here's my suggestion, go to Laura's and know that we're gonna come back to the main room and basically do a quick debriefing with people sharing ahas from their breakout session. Mm -hmm. And if you have a question, that would be a good time to like bring it out for everyone's benefit. Oh my gosh, this is so stressful. Okay, thanks. <laughs> There's no wrong answer. You're gonna, this will be perfect, don't, don't you? Yeah. Okay, thanks. All right, okay. All right, uh, let me just, before we go, Prim, I just wanna, find the ladies here and make sure they're set up as co-hosts. And uh, that way, hopefully they can access the recording tool. So Meg. Um, most of the people can actually record their sessions because I allowed, I gave them access as well. So it'll help with, with that. And if they don't like their room, I also made it to a point that they can change rooms uh, when we open the breakout rooms. She's a uh, genius. Excuse yeah, me. Yeah, Prim, Prim is amazing. Wow. wow. Amazing. Prim, you are amazing. All right, Prim. So uh, whenever you're ready, go ahead and send us on our way. And we'll be in there for about 15 minutes, 10 to 15 minutes. And then we'll come back to the break, big room. OK, uh, I'll open all the rooms now. Thank you, Prim. Yeah. You stole mine, keep it simple, but I would say just start somewhere, like a couple people touched on, pick one or two of your VIPs who are friends with each other, ask them to invite friends, pick a favorite activity and just get it on the books. And yeah, it can be three weeks from now or, or even less. Um, keep it super simple. Allie, with, with the accent, word of wisdom. looks frozen uh if she's muted yeah i'm trying to sign language ellie <laughs> <laughs> i'm on facebook 
I mean, on a Zoom. <laughs> All right, Ellie. If I was going to guess. Well, guys, I just, I just wanted to say, Dan, thanks for actionalizing these ideas. We spent some time together chatting about this, and I was having trouble kind of pinpointing exactly what we wanted, and our conversations allowed us to put this thing together. So thank you, thank you, thank you for that, and thank everybody for participating, Meg and Ellie and Laura. Uh, we'll talk soon. Meg, I'll see you soon because we're in the same town. And um, thank you guys for, for joining us. It was great. It was a great, great event. Thanks. Thanks, thank everyone. You. I appreciate you all. Have a great day. And then the video, uh, Prim, are you still on with us? Yes, I am. All right, Prim. So um, as far as the video, the recording of this, um, I how do you, are we going to be able to get that out to people tomorrow and um, and maybe the chat as well? Uh, so the, for the videos, yes, uh, I can send it out to the people tomorrow. Uh, but for the breakout rooms, it's all going to be downloaded on people's uh, computers. So it might take a while for it to finish downloading and it will be automatically in the downloads folder in your files on your computer. Okay. And if someone, and if someone downloaded it and they wanted to like share it with us so that we could send it out to people, um, what email, can you put a, an email in the chat maybe that people could, if someone saved it, they can send it to you? Um, I'm actually planning to give out the Google Drive and they can add it there once I send out everything, all the recordings tomorrow. Fantastic. Can you also put it on my Facebook page? Prim? Yes, I will also put it on Facebook page. Okay, all right. Thank you, thank you. And Prim, can you give yourself a raise? <laughs> Can you send working us on it. We're working on it. We're trying to find ways to help out. Is Venmo? I mean, seriously. Oh, er Erica got it. <laughs> oh, there's no Venmo <laughs> in the Philippines. Sorry. Yeah, we're trying to figure it out. Prim, thank you so much. Ladies, thank you so much. Um, for those that um, would still like to do something like this again, next week we resume the uh, customer experience workshop that Melissa, whose picture you actually see there where Prim is uh, on, uh, has been hosting that with me. And what we've been doing is creating the systems uh, based on the customer experience workshop from KW um, and, and basically putting it in a timeline um, so that we can have a, a repetitive, uh, a, basically a process to ensure that we're providing an excellent customer experience. And we'll start next week again. It goes out, that goes about 45 minutes to an hour on Wednesdays at the same time, 4.45 Eastern time or 4.30 uh, Eastern time. Thanks Thank everyone. You. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you. So thank you. Bye. All right. Thanks, thank guys. You. Bye.